My name is Mary Rose Sweeney. I am head of the School of Nursing and Psychotherapy and Community Health at DCU. And I am delighted to be joined this morning by Karen Green, Director of Nursing at Beaumont Hospital for our Alumni Voices series at DCU. So thanks a million, Karen, for joining us this morning. Um, I'm gonna ask you first, how did you feel when you first heard there was a pandemic uh, coming your way? Good morning, Mary Rose, and thanks a million to, to you and to the, uh, the team in the alumni office for inviting me uh, on to, to talk to you today. Uh, it's a real honor being a DCU graduate, so um, I, I really appreciate that. Um, so I suppose just to put a little bit of context, I've been Director of Nursing in Bowman for the last five years, but I graduated in DCU in 99, and so I have a long experience uh, within, within the health service. Um, but I suppose, uh, you know, responding to something of the, 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 the gravity and the, the seriousness of a, of a pandemic was something that I don't think any of us had experienced before. Um, I think it probably, it goes back to probably January of this year when we were, uh, I suppose, starting to keep an eye on uh, the international concerns, looking at the picture that was unfolding in, um, in China. And I suppose towards the end of January, starting to see that shift uh, across, you know, the, the the world, across European countries. And I think it was the nervousness for for us here, where I suppose number one, our proximity to the airport, with a lot of international travel that was still happening. Um, you know, certainly we would, uh, you know, be at risk of uh, having to provide a response should there be a, a passenger or a, a flight that would come in that there would be uh, concerns uh, on. So I, I was very aware of it from, from, from January onwards, as, as were, what, what was everyone, uh, you know, um, globally. But I think being within the healthcare uh, sector in particular, I suppose we had that kind of that nervousness about the unfolding picture, and I think very quickly we got into preparatory mode uh, to make sure that we um, would be in a position to provide as good a response as 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 as, as we could. Mm -hmm. I think one of the the things that was as, as the, the the weeks went on, I had a, a trip planned to New York. And it's years and years since I've been to New York. I was so excited about uh, about about this trip, and I went uh, on the trip because uh, I suppose uh, international travel was permitted still at the time. But it was actually only when I arrived in New York that all of the travel restrictions changed. Uh, I was had, had literally landed, and the governor of New York uh, closed down the the state. Um, you know, all of the, the shops, the restaurants. You know, all of the restrictions started kicking in. So. I think for me, that was very palpable and visible. And uh, at that point, I, I, I made plans to come home straight away. And it was really, I really had a sense that I needed to return to work. I wanted to be here with my team, with, with my colleagues that I've worked with for so long. And it didn't feel, it didn't feel right to be away uh, at, at that stage anymore. So that was the moment it, it sank in that yeah, it, it was coming yeah. for our shores. Yeah, so presumably then there was lots of preparation and things you had to start doing to get ready. So what were the main kind of things you had to you had to roll out at that point in preparation? Yeah. I think I suppose being in a level four hospital and you know one of the main hospitals in, in the city, um I thought I think you always take comfort that we have very good controls in place. Um all of the times for you know in terms of infection control measures and um, so you would certainly have a comfort in that i'd also i suppose having been in a leadership position for, for for the previous five years i have a real kind of confidence in my team i have a confidence i suppose in in our staff both our nursing staff our healthcare assistants but also all of the clinical and non-clinical staff you know I, I i know them very well mm -hmm. and, and, and we know their capabilities so there was a real comfort in that as well However, I suppose, I think we were all keeping an eye on, on the media and I suppose it was very um, upsetting and uh, really concerning to see the picture unfolding. I think particular for our, our Italian colleagues and I think healthcare is a, you know, it's a global network, but it's also a small network and we all have, um, I suppose, international colleagues that we would um, liaise with, we're, we're, we're part of different professional networks. So I think it was very, um, 
it was it was upsetting to see the picture that was unfolding there. So whilst you know you have really good control measures in place, you certainly get into prepa uh, preparation mode. You have great confidence in your team and the abilities um, and, and 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 experience of, of of different types of I suppose emergency kind of responses uh, in the past. Uh, I think certainly that picture that was unfolding in Italy was something that we knew, uh, I suppose, we hadn't experienced before um, and, and really needed to get into a different mode of, of response looking at that. Mm -hmm. So what were the practical things you did in, 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 in preparation for its arrival at Beaumont? Yeah, I suppose the practical things were, I suppose, looking at uh, what you had at your disposal and um, looking uh, at, at your workforce, uh, first and foremost. Um, so we certainly knew that we would need additionality in our workforce and we knew that we would need, I suppose, um, uh, a certain level of upskilling, particularly around uh, critical care and respiratory, um, you know, type, uh, type, type, type clinical scenarios. Um, I think for me, uh, leading and, 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 and managing a, a, a quite a large team of, of assistant directors of nursing, um, uh, for me, straight away, it was, it, it was about communicating. It was about, you know, sitting down as a team and um, understanding, I suppose, uh, what, what was needed and um, linking in with the various kind of streams of nursing, i.e. the management streams, the education streams, the clinical streams, um, and, and getting very quickly into a mode whereby we were um, planning on the type of upskilling that we needed to do, and also, I suppose, how we could provide that additionality to, to the workforce. Um, and I think, I suppose, being in a level four hospital, having such a, a large workforce at your disposal, we also had the opportunity where people who don't traditionally uh, maybe um, operate within uh, clinical roles currently due to you know, various kind of career uh, changes along the way, we were able to pull them back a little bit. And I think I was also, um, I was uh, you know, somewhat um, taken kind of by, by surprise at the amount of offers we got from people, you know, staff who had previously worked in Beaumont, staff who had gone to industry and uh, wanted to return, I suppose, in support of their colleagues, but also in response to the public health emergency that mm. had unfolded. Um, so, uh, albeit, I suppose, international travel stopped and were very uh, heavily dependent on overseas recruitment. Um, so I knew that wouldn't be an opportunity for us to expand and, and, and provide that additionality that we needed. But actually, you know, I suppose locally and, you know, with, with, within, you know, the staff that had, had worked here before, we certainly had a lot of people who were willing to, to, to go that extra mile and to come on board for, for the period of time that it was required. It's amazing, isn't it? And, and were there logistical things that had to be done as well? So was there lots of movement of of different spaces and you know areas across the hospital. Yeah, so I think very much I suppose from a hospital response perspective, um, you know there was obviously a very high level steering group uh, with all of the various uh, specialties and clinical and non-clinical um, uh, departments represented at them. But then I think on a more local kind of clinical level. Um, we had, you know, I suppose clinical uh, huddles in, in, in a socially distant manner, whereby I suppose you were really trying to design and um, very quickly get into a mode whereby you were planning, I suppose, what we would have deemed COVID and non-COVID pathways. So ultimately, you're trying to provide this, you know, emergency response within the hospital, but also recognize that you um, are a hospital that has national and regional specialties, and there's some activity that just has to continue and is not going to go away despite the, 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 the level of the emergency we were having to respond to. So I think, um, you know, part of the logistics were looking at what was essential, what was not going to go away, and what were the type of patients that we um, needed to, to, to be able to care for in, in, in as high a standard as we possibly could, but also planning and preparing for um, the new pathways right from the front door, right from the access point, um, all the way through until hopefully we got those patients safely safely home to their, their families after a period of time. So mm -hmm. this was part of the logistics were planning your emergency department, planning to uh, you know, scale up your critical care environments to, 
um, you know, a huge capacity. So, you know, traditionally we would have a HDU environment here and two critical care um, in environments on top of that. So we were then having to look at, well, where else might we go, um, you know, if, 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 if that capacity was needed. Um, we were designating some wards for two, two COVID um, type patients. So obviously the teams in there were having to entirely change their specialties. You know, we had some phenomenal nurse managers who, you know, traditionally provide a management service to day daycare services. Mm -hmm. And then they were, you know, overnight became a CNM of, of a, a designated COVID ward uh, with an entirely new team, with an entirely new, um, you know, specialty type, and um, you know, with an entirely new um, MDT approach. But you know, they really just took it on with, uh, you know, huge profess professionalism, you know, huge leadership skills, and um, you know, uh, with, with the goal the whole time in making sure that we, uh, you know, were able to provide uh, really good care to to the patients that that, that, that came came our way. And so is the whole hospital now collectively breathing a sigh of relief yet or are you still holding your breath a little bit? Yeah, no, I don't think any of us are in, in the space yet where we'd be breathing a sigh of relief. Um, I think certainly, um, you know, it would be remiss of me not to mention um, the uh, 2020 being the year of the nurse uh, as, as, as designated by the, the WHO. And I think we certainly took the opportunity on, on the 12th of May and International Nurses Day to take a pause. Uh, I don't think there was a sigh of relief, but certainly take a pause and recognize the efforts of, of, of our nursing team uh, in particular, given that it was Inter International Nurses Day. Um, I think, I suppose, we're in a, a new space uh, in terms of you know, trying to plan our new norm, trying to plan nearly two parallel uh, pathways. Um, I think we all very much see, uh, you know, the, the huge public health um, uh, efforts that have been made and the public response to those, uh, those, those requests. And certainly that has paid huge dividends in our ability to be able to, to manage this pandemic in, in, in a safe and as, 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 as um, you know, uh, I suppose, uh, timely a way as, as mm. possible. But it very much sits in the in the back of your mind that mm -hmm. uh, you know right throughout this my my concern has been not only our patients who you know you have seen um, be you know so so ill um, through a, a COVID diagnosis, but I'm also really conscious of those patients that we have responsibility for that possibly you know didn't want to access our services at the time or you know decided to, to wait to access services so I think you're always trying to balance um, you know the, the, that, that, um, that initial response with um, the, the, the patients who are also so deserving of care so for me no 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 sorry relief no um no, uh, you know, back to normal. I'm not sure that that that, that we our, our our normal going forward will be the same as what it was, but very much uh, continue to be in in planning mode. Uh, huge engagement across all of the specialties to plan our new norm, and and and, and also a huge opportunity to, to to shape healthcare in a way where perhaps we can bring care a little bit closer to home, or perhaps we can um, make the time patients uh, have to spend in a hospital setting, even if it's an outpatients department, a little bit less. So also taking the opportunity to uh, you know uh, engage on that level. <laughs> Karen, can I ask you, was there a specific leadership um, approach adopted um, by yourself um, in, in the, when, when the pandemic arrived at Bowman Hospital? Um, I suppose for, for anybody that would know me, um, they would know that I suppose I, I, I really um, believe in a compassionate type of leadership. I believe in a very visible type of leadership and I think that the relationships that I have built and have uh, you know across uh, the clinical setting and um, would be something that uh, you know stands to you very well when something uh, like this uh, comes about 
I think there were certain switches, certainly in style, that that, that were required. Um, I would be very much a person who likes to kind of upskill my team, who likes to concentrate on succession planning, who who likes to, I suppose, um, I, I certainly like the the CNMs and the director of nurse managers to to be in charge of their patch and to 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 have that kind of accountability and responsibility that goes along with those those leadership roles. But there certainly was a requirement at times for a, a more kind of a central response, uh, I suppose, within a hospital of this size. Uh, I think we very much operate uh, at divisional or, or, or directorate level, as, as we, would, um, we would call it. But I think uh, for situations like this on such a scale, at times you need to be able to look at things in a more central kind of leadership style. So I suppose we had never seen such unprecedented, unprecedented absenteeism levels. Uh, at a point in time, we had about 20% absenteeism across nursing. So responding to that can't be just left at, you know, individual department level. And um, when you, you require such mass redeployment, when you're having to respond to services and those services are changing kind of, you know, shift to shift or, or, or day to day. So I certainly would have had a more central um, approach than traditionally I would have. But I think also what I, what, I, what I really have taken from it is we spent a lot of time over the past two years with our, our nursing strategic plan in building leadership capacity in and um, you know really empowering CNMs to you know own their own patch to you know take on that kind of um, I suppose accountability that goes along I, I always say I think the CNM2 position is one of the, the hardest positions in nursing and um, because you have that kind of clinical responsibility you have that staff responsibility and you're also engaging so widely with multidisciplinary teams and um, you know so I really saw the, the 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 effect of all of that kind of building that lead, frontline leadership capacity and that, that that it had at that time. And I, I mentioned to you previously uh, that some of our CNMs, you know, they literally changed their specialty overnight. They were given entirely new teams that they hadn't worked with before. And some of the, I suppose, the stories that I have heard, you know, I would have been in and out to to, to the CNMs on a, on a daily basis checking how they were, listening, getting feedback, because we were changing pathways so much, you know, they're the people that will tell you whether it's working for the patients uh, or not. So I suppose listening to, to some of the stories and how they kind of engaged with their, with, with, with their teams, how they responded to, you know, some of the fear, like, you know, it, we, we were all a little bit fearful for our parents or for our families or for those that might be vulnerable in your, in, 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 in your own kind of uh, home setting. But if you think of the, 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 the cohort of, of, of staff we have that are part of our workforce from overseas, so they couldn't see their families. They, you know, only had kind of phone calls to, to check and hope that they were okay. So as a CNN, just trying to manage all of those kind of, you know, um, delicate bits and those personal bits that, 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 that happen within a team when you have an entirely new workforce was something that I found just uh, that was managed so effectively and, and so well by, 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 by our CNM. So I, I have a real sense of pride from, from what, what I witnessed um, and I suppose it's, it's a real honour to be in the position I am when you have um, you know, professionals such as that uh, at your disposal. Karen, uh, the student nurses from DCU were, of course, um, fighting the pandemic on the front line as well. Do you have any um, thoughts on, on, on their involvement and um, how it was for them? Yeah, um, I, I can only imagine, um, you know, I suppose we engage with our students on a regular basis all the time, but I, I, I try to put myself back to, to the position of when in 1996 or, or, or a little bit later when I was a student nurse and I can't imagine um, because you're, you're, you're dealing with all your own kind of uh, nervousness about being out in a clinical area for the first time, everything is quite new to you. So something that uh, on, on this scale must have been really quite quite overwhelming at times. Um, I think we're really fortunate with the, the, the supports uh, that we have mm -hmm. and the structures that we have in place for, for all of our staff, but particularly for, for, for our students. But it was what I witnessed was, um, you know, students really gelling as part of the, the teams. 
uh, very ready to take on, you know, whatever needed to be taken on, and um, really conscious of, I suppose, the changes in communication that were required for our patients. How frightening must it be to, to be a patient, possibly with a dementia diagnosis, um, and somebody coming in with full PP, um, and and everybody behaving in a, in, a, in a slightly different manner. So I think what I witnessed was that, I suppose, that compassion that is really instilled in, in, in our nursing colleagues right from, um, you know, undergraduate level. And I think, you know, going forward, what I would hope uh, that the, the undergraduates would have, have witnessed is the ability of nursing as a profession to be able to respond at really high speed, to be able to adapt to whatever the healthcare uh, context is that faces us, and actually be able to, the, the ability to be able to work in new ways, work in, uh, I suppose, new environments, mm -hmm. um, but all the time keeping, you know, that kind of compassion, that kind of, um, you know, uh, sense of the impact that these changes have on the patient and always being the forefront of that kind of advocacy role for patients and, and that was something that really stood out for me so um, you know I'm full of admiration for for our undergraduates that were here dur during that time. Yes and Karen I just want to thank you very much for taking part in this interview uh, for the Alumni Voices series um, for everything you have been doing at the front line for, for patients and for society. Um, so, so thanks a million. Thanks Mary Rose. And I suppose just as I, I said at the start, like it's a, a, I hold very dear to me the, uh, the, the few years that I spent in DCU and I suppose the, the qualification that I got from there. And um, so it's been a real honor to be asked uh, to, to participate today. Thanks a million.